All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Spark to Fire. I'm your host, Man Rhodes. Today, I've got my friend Brian with me. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show today, bro. I'm excited. I am too. I mean, to think we randomly met on an airplane, right? <laughs> you know, my wife always tells me, she's like, you sit next to the coolest people on airplanes, always. It's like a, it's like an un- um, it's like an untalked about gift. I would feel like in our family where I am constantly sitting next to somebody who's just incredibly interesting. And uh-huh. you were, you were definitely like at the top of that list that kind of, uh, set that off. So, um, excited to get into what we're about to get into today. So uh, you have a very specific set of skills, like Liam Neeson said in the movie taken. And, um, <laughs> dude, when you first told me this and I was sharing this with my wife, I was like, how in the world is this possible? And like, why is not, why is no one else talking about this? Right. And so I would love if you could just like show us a, um, give us a 5,000 foot view of what we're going to be talking about today. And then let's go back into your origin story of how we got to this point. Sure. So what I'm going to teach everybody today is an unfair advantage on something that you know, but you just don't know that you know it. And I know that sounds very ominous, right? But I'm going to teach you guys how to understand people based on their facial features and how to analyze somebody's face to understand how to speak their language. So when I first talk about this, people are like, ooh, face reading. Can you read palms too? And I'm like, no, I can't. But this, like I'm an introvert by nature. I call myself an introverted extrovert in that I love to be around people, but I was terrified of being around people at the exact same time. So I would go to events, but I would sit in the corner, right? And then in 2011, somebody came to town and we were supposed to meet for dinner. And so I get to the restaurant and she's like, Hey, I'm not going to make it. Oh, here we go. Right. I'm, you know, I'm having a little pity party slash stubborn moment. She's like, no, you need to come to this trade show and meet this guy. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go over there. I've already sat down. I got my glass of wine, whatever. And she's like, no, you need to come do it. And I went over and that's where I met Matt Fulfer, who's my mentor and my friend. And he taught me how to analyze facial features. And I thought there is no way, look, I've been reading books on, body language, NLP, how to win friends and influence people. Nobody's ever told me this. This guy's got to be full of it. And there was a table, people sat around and he read everybody's facial feature. And everybody afterwards was like blown away of how accurate it was. And I was sitting there, I was prepared. I'm like, I'm going to catch this guy. He's going to use Barnum statements, which are like, oh, you've had a hard time. And you're like, well, yeah, who hasn't had a hard time, right? But when he did it, I was just awestruck and I immediately picked up the book that I still carry in my backpack today. And then he lives over in Fort Worth. I'm based in Dallas and I would drive to Fort Worth two times a month for these little two hour sessions that he would teach us a facial feature. And what happened is it took me from being on the help desk because when I was growing up being an introvert, what do good introverts do? They find jobs where people have to come to them versus they go to other people. Right? So I was a balancer, bartender. I worked retail. Um, and then what do you do in your technology? Well, you work help desk because people have to come to you. But after learning this, it completely changed the trajectory of my life, socially, romantically, you name it, uh, professionally, because once you learn to get out of the prison in your own mind and move the present moment, it changes the interaction. In this day and age where everybody's always looking at their cell phone or their smartwatch and everything else, we don't give people our time and attention and we don't feel seen and heard. So are you familiar with uh, Brian Bogert at all? Um, heard the name, but you refresh me just for sure. people. He's a, he's a good speaker, covers a lot of things about like how we build up things in our mind and we kind of build walls and barriers. But he talked about there's four human needs, physical safety, emotional safety. People want to be feel seen and heard and people want to be connected. Well, when you learn to study other people's facial features, you're giving them your time and attention. So that's the seen and heard. And then when you tell them a little bit about themselves, if you tell them, that creates the connection as well. So what I'm going to show you guys today is just tip of the iceberg. You know, um, we're going to talk about eyebrows and eyes. Why? Because no, pretty much no matter where you are, you can get away with it, right? Like even if people are wearing masks, you can still make out eyebrows and eyes. So I like to cover that. And the main reason that I teach eyebrows is because eyebrows lead to eye contact. So even if you're just taking extra few seconds and you think, what shape are their eyebrows, then it creates that eye connection next because you're looking them in the eye, right? It just naturally, you go to eye contact and then people feel seen and heard. So the day and age where people feel more disconnected than ever, especially after the last two years, I guarantee you this will change everybody's life that's listening to it. And so for the people who are listening on the audio side, as we're going through the the PowerPoint, I'm getting ready to show you, 
then we'll describe things also like rounded eyebrows, what does it mean? So uh, with that being said, you want me to jump right into it? Yeah, really quick though. I think it's, I think it's important to note that like one of the first things we ever talked about was the fact that you're going to be speaking on stages talking about this. This isn't just something like a, you know, a hobby that you're keeping to yourself or um, something that you're just kind of, you know, in the shadows, you are being asked to speak on these massive stages with people like Bradley um, yes. people that hang around Bradley, um, who I'm, I'm a huge fan of podcasting wise. Like I think he's, he's awesome at that. So this is, uh, you're going to be continuing to grow and go on more and more stages and people are gonna be like, Oh yeah, Brian, he was on spark to fire. Yeah. So I think it's super cool. <laughs> exactly. this. this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm speaking this Friday on Brad's event. He's having, um, it's called closer school live. It's in Las Vegas. And so they're going to do a uh, Thursday, Friday. So I'm going to be one of the speakers on Friday. And then the one I'm also excited about next is called Haste and Hustle. And I'm going to be speaking not only with Steve Sims, who is just phenomenal to be around some amazing speakers, but Sir Richard Branson is going to be the same speaker there. So, I mean, if you would have asked me a year ago, a year and a half ago, look, I've been teaching this to friends, to family once I learned it. And then really with the pandemic coming in and everything else, I thought more and more people need this, especially millennials, and I don't say that in a bad way, have grown up with text messaging and email and the ability to perfect pictures. And what we like, and I'm 47, so I'm putting myself out there, right, is when I was growing up, they said the number one public fear was public speaking, or the number one fear was public speaking, right? That over death. Now, face-to-face -face communication is as terrifying to some people because nobody ever answers the phone when you call them, right? They prefer to text message, they prefer to email. And so it creates anxiety with people. So I just want to help people learn how to connect with other people and kind of help change their lives. So, uh, but yes, yeah, so being able to speak on stage is absolutely insane. Um, look, I still get nervous getting up there. Cause again, there's the introvert side of me. And what I found through Steve and other people is the minute that I bring somebody else up to focus on them and talk about how to teach it, that's when my kind of anxiety goes away. So it's, it's a fun world to be in right now. That's super cool. Well, and just for everybody that uh, listens primarily on um, you know, Apple podcasts, Spotify, Google, Amazon podcasts, guys, this is going to be on YouTube, but I want to make sure that you guys actually get to see this presentation. Cause this is, this is a really great presentation. And I remember when you showed me this book on the plane and yeah. uh, you showed me all these sketches and everything. And I was just like, this looks like th there's no way this is real. And then uh, you started telling me things about my wife's personality just based upon her Instagram photos. And I was like, holy crap, like, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. And that's exactly, this is what the game changer in it for me was. I always picked up books on body language and everything, but that's a reactive skill. This is proactive. So when I, and I'll talk about this in a minute, but when I used to go out and do presentations, when I got better at this, I got put on a team that any customer over a million dollars, they flew me and two other people around to do presentations. Well, in your hotel room, you can make sure, is my projector working? Is my PowerPoint working? But people were always the unknown. Once I knew who we were gonna go meet with, I'd go look them up on LinkedIn or social media and look at their pictures and actually analyze it and break it down. And people go, okay, well, maybe I'm not in sales. Okay, when I went to Steve Sims event, ironically, it popped up, it was a year ago yesterday, that spoke at Steve Sims event. Well, I didn't know any of the people that were in his group. So I had him add me to the Facebook group. And then as people were saying, hey, I'm so excited to come in town for the speakeasy, which there is one in LA coming up that you guys should check out also. But um, mm -hmm. I would look for people to say that they were coming and then I would analyze their face. So when I walked in, it was like meeting old friends instead of walking into a room completely cold. So I'd walk up to people and start talking to them. And I kind of knew how to speak their language. We'll explain that here in a second. And people are like, oh, is this your second or third speakeasy? I'm like, no, this is actually my first. And because Steve doesn't tell you who the speakers are, I sat in the room along with everybody else until he called me up to the front. And then people are like, oh, crap. Because as soon as people know that you understand how to analyze their face, they're like, yeah, OK, that's cool. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just be in the corner over here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and then that's why I named the, the company Subtle Skills was because you don't have to tell anybody you're doing this, right? Just like you don't go and read a body language book and go, "Hey, I just read a body language book." <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, and you're like checking in on them. I my uh my wife uh reads a lot of those, so like I always, I always like look at what part she's reading. I'm like, oh man, am I displaying that? Am I displaying that body language right now? Do I look upset, Megan? <laughs> well, and that's the whole thing. Like when we get into body language, right? We're thinking, oh crap, did I cross my arms? Did I stick my hands in my pocket? 
But when you're thinking about facial features, you're just focused 100% on the person you're talking to. And people ask all the time, is it manipulation? No, it's no different than the book, The Five Love Languages, right? And that's just what you may need and give are different from what somebody else may need or receive, right? And so when you learn to modify things for other people, they appreciate it. And that's where that connection comes in. And the cool thing about I mentioned earlier, I can go and look up people on LinkedIn, but it doesn't matter if I walked into a room where I don't know anybody, I look for certain traits, which you're going to see in a minute. And I just walk up and start talking to them. And here's a, a great icebreaker. It has absolutely nothing to do with reading faces. And that is, don't ask people what they do because number one, everybody asks that question. Number two, what if they don't like their job? Now they dislike you for asking them about something they hate. So instead, I like to ask people, hey, when you get to go on your next trip, where are you going to go? Because it tells me, one, are they like beach people? Are they like the sun? Are they adventure people? Are they going skiing? Are they going to go rock climbing? You learn more about people because people show up to work, but people plan their vacation. So it tells you way more about somebody then ask them what they do for a living. So that's good. That, let's uh, jump on in here. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about it. Like I said, this is an unfair advantage because you've been trained in it. You just don't really realize that you've been trained in it. People go, well, that's crap. I'm like, okay, what about basic phrases? Like take one on the chin. They've got a nose for this. They've got an ear for this. They've got an eye for this. Uh, keep a stiff upper lip. I'll explain that one here in a second. But we talk about people's faces every single day. And you think, okay, well, why do we talk about their faces? That's because it goes back all the way to the Greeks. There was the study of what's known as physiognomy. And physiognomy is there's 42 muscles in the face and it's how the muscles change over time. And what they realize is that those muscles, as that muscle memory kicks in, the face is altered. So you can actually look at twins, and we'll talk about this in a second, is they recognize that there were patterns on things, just like there's patterns in body language and everything else. It doesn't matter about across ethnicity, where in the world it is, there are certain facial features that were consistent with those personalities things. And people go, okay, well, I still don't understand why should I even bother to learn this stuff? You can instantly create relationships anywhere you go. So on the sales side, how do you talk to a gatekeeper? How do you prepare a presentation? Are they auditory? Are they visual? Um, how do I use it? Because I travel and I speak. Well, I use it all the time for free upgrades in hotels or on the plane. So a good <laughs> example of this is I was in Indiana, right? And um, I was trying to get to New York City right? and then back to Dallas. And that's when we had the snowstorm in Dallas a few months ago. And which we're not having now, it's like 105 degrees right now. But yeah. um, I was stuck in Indiana. They canceled my flight home to Dallas. They wanted me to fly from Indiana to New York, spend two hours there, and then fly back to Dallas. So I would have been like 10 hours in the air with a two hour break. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do this. So I went to the airport early and I walked down and said, hey, look, I'm not on this flight. I'm on the eight o'clock flight, but I want to see about getting on this three o'clock flight. And I said, hey, I know you control the weather. And she had rounded eyebrows. And this will make more sense in a minute. So I said, I know it's all your coworkers' fault. All you guys control the weather. You control the planes and everything else. And I just joked with her for a minute. And I come back and not only did she bump me up because I was on standby, but she bumped me up to first class, which she didn't have to do. And why? Because instead of everybody else who's just dismissive, like, here's my ticket and that's it. I spent a few minutes just talking to her and I was just hoping to get on the plane. The getting bumped up to first class was a bonus. But the, what I'm teaching everybody today, you want to know where to practice it at? Practice it on everybody that everybody else dismisses. Servers, bartenders, hotel attendants, right? When you check in at the airport, nobody's nice to the gate agent. All they ever do is get yelled at, right? So you can just practice on these people that everybody else dismisses. Like just if you take one extra second when a server hands you a menu and you look at their face and you actually acknowledge them and say, just here's my menu, watch how it changes your experience, but everybody else is in the room as well. And uh, the reason I put the last one on here, celebrity-like status, again, I call it subtle skills because I don't walk around telling everybody what I do, but if you, you want to share it with other people, you kind of get that little celebrity status because all of a sudden they're like, no, 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 let me bring over a different friend or let me bring over somebody else. And if you're practicing on servers, then they bring everybody from the cook in the back to the manager to everybody else. And the next <laughs> thing you know, you get free food, free drink, you name it. So I can still go into places and they're like, he's the eyebrow guy. Now I teach way more than that. But that's what everybody remembers. <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> the number one thing that people ask about is 
well, what isn't it all genetics? Well, yes, genetics is what you inherit, right, from your parents and your, your uh, grandparents and everybody else. But what happens to you over time is known as epigenetics. So in the picture we have up on screen for everybody who's listening auditory is it's a guy that goes to the gym and he only does upper body and he never does legs, right? So he's got this huge upper body, big biceps and everything else, but little tiny legs. Well, that's not genetics. That's what muscles he chose to work, mm. right? When he went to the gym, well, your face is no different. So what happens is the mind creates movement and movement creates muscle. And that's why we talk about muscle memory and everything else. And you're going to see a picture of me here in just a second of how much my face changed over 20 years. But you can take identical twins who grew up with the same genetic code in the same household, but they had different life experiences and you can see the little subtle changes in their face based on did they have good romantic life? Did they struggle in sports or in school and academics? You name it. Do, you know, it can change your outlook. And you're going to see that in a minute, how that's reflected in your eyes. Wow. So um, <laughs> before I ever talk about anybody else, I show pictures of me. You know why? Because they usually bring people up on stage. You know, I ask for volunteers. If you're going to do that, you got to throw yourself out there first. Yep. So <laughs> up on the screen <laughs> for everybody who's uh, listening in is a picture of me at 18 versus 38. Now at 18, I had some really cool hair because I think I knew I wasn't going to have it now. But uh, in addition to that, if you look at my two faces here, what you'll see is on the right-hand side, my eyebrows changed. So it went from when I was 18 to being straight, but now it's angled. You'll understand this here in a minute when I cover eyebrows, but what happened is when I became a corporate trainer, I had to learn the material so I could teach it to other people. So an easy way to remember it is if you see an angled eyebrow, it's what's their angle, help them understand it so they can help other people. Other things you can see is my ears used to stick out more. And ears are like wind drag. So the more your ears stick out, the more they push back against how everybody else does things. And what's known as a conformist ear is that when your ears come closer to your head, it's just so like the wind drag, there is none. It just keeps going. And so you see these things when you look at people's faces. And we like, again, it's part of our everyday language. Keep a stiff upper lip. Uh, lip. Take one on the chin. You know, Keep your nose to the grindstone. So if you see somebody who has a small nose, you know, these people are good at repetitive tasks that they have to do over and over and over again. That's where the phrase, keep your nose to the grindstone came from. <laughs> oh my gosh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious. Because no, that's our, company, that, that's our company name, right? Do you know that? Oh, you know, I didn't even think about that. That's right. Yeah, grindstone. Yeah. <laughs> so authors and artists used to take classes in physiognomy to understand how do you describe characters in your book and how do you draw them, right? Because we now put photos in books, but back then... The only way to describe your characters in a book was through their actions and through their facial features. So we've actually been receiving training our entire life because we had mandatory reading in school on, you know, and they, that's how they described everybody. And so why do you think when we look at, okay, if I talk about like evil characters, right, they all have pointed horns or fangs or pointed chins, downturned noses. Yeah. I mean, that's not a coincidence. We've been taught this our entire life. It's crazy, huh? Huh. So go into that a little bit, like d down to like the evil characters and stuff. Like, can we, yeah. can we reverse out of that? Yeah. So for anybody not even thinking about people's faces, but we'll use dogs as an example. If you saw a bulldog or you saw a Doberman Pinscher, who are you going to go pet first? Right. You were attracted towards rounded things. And right. so well, people walk up and pet the bulldog without thinking twice, but because the Doberman Pinscher has any angled ears, we're like, Whoa, we stay away from it. Right. But you look at, in if you go look at artists and authors and all that kind of stuff, everything that's pointed, we kind of stay away from. So why is Batman scary? Because he's, he's done like a bat, right? Like he has the ears. Why are vampires scary? They have the pointed teeth. If you look at witches in almost any show you watch, they have pointed chins. Yep, that's right. And, yeah, and then a downturned nose you see on a lot of villains and that's literally like your nose blocking off so that you it's where you're only focused on what your needs and wants are. So when we look at a lot of villains in movies, you can turn on a cartoon or a movie and within five seconds, you know, who's the hero and who's the villain. But you haven't been right because we've been taught this our entire life. I know it's crazy. I just took my I have a five year old and we took her to Disney World. And when you go look at the Little Mermaid, right, the Little Mermaid has all rounded features. And what does the evil lady that's trying to take her stuff have all angles? right? Pointed features. So it's been ingrained into us through books, cartoons, uh, movies, 
but we've never been formally trained until today. Crazy, right? <clears throat> I talked about the, what are some of the other challenges we have today? Well, we can't meet face to face anymore. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times we're now down to Zoom calls, which I told you earlier, I have just books and books on body language over here, but they don't do me a lot of good because I can't tell right now, are your arms crossed or your legs crossed? I can't see anything because we only have so much real estate. And there's still people everywhere I go today who are wearing masks. So if somebody's wearing a mask, you can't really read anything except for their forehead, their eyebrows, uh, some stuff about their eyes, the top part of their nose, and ears are kind of pulled out because depending if they know how to wear it or not, the mask is pulling their ears in all different weird directions, right? Right. So there, we don't get to see everything we used to. And that's why, especially right now with masks being coming back in for some people, like sarcasm is lost on people because usually when you say a sarcastic remark, you smile afterwards, but nobody can see it if I'm doing this. And now you just think I'm an a-hole, right? So uh, oh, we've had to adjust. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah, I'm sarcastic by nature. And if I have to wear a mask, you don't know that I'm smiling at the end of it. And so then you just think I'm rude. <laughs> So wow. it's time to adjust in a lot of ways. And that's what really, once you learn to read faces, then what it does is it takes people from an unknown to a known. And here's the most important things that everybody asks. Oh, does it tell me if they're a cheater? Does it say this, that? It's not trying to categorize anyone. It's learning to understand how do they take in and how do they process information? So mm -hmm. faces are more of a map of where you've been versus telling you where you're going to go in the future. I have a question. Have you Absolutely. have you seen the uh, the Civil War, the before and after Civil War photo of the guy that was in the Civil War? <clears throat> yes, where their eyes become recessed back and a super strong chin and their like cheeks and everything sink in. Absolutely. You can look at that with a lot of soldiers, um, not even just the Civil War, go and research um, concentration camp. Oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, and I ran across this. Um, We'll kind of deviate here for a second. Everyone should read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. It's a very good book. Um, the first half of that book, though, is the very daunting tale of what he experienced from the time he gets off the train to when he was set free. And I went to a wedding in Poland five years ago, actually eight years ago, and it was near Auschwitz. And so we went. And when you go and you see not just what the soldiers who work there look like, but what the people look like, you realize like something we all recognize, sunken cheeks, right? Sunken cheeks, we know there's something wrong with them. But you start to see things like where eyes are pulled back. And this will make more sense. We'll talk about eyes in a few minutes. But yes, our faces are constantly changing. So, so for the people who are listening auditorily, when you couldn't see the picture of me in eight, 18 versus 38, my ears are different, my eyes are different. Even my eye angles, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, were different because when I was raised, I was raised in a household that it wasn't a bad household. It's just, we could always tell you what could potentially go wrong, right? So they know that we had some things we were positive about, but it was more like watching out about what could happen. And so what happened is I adopted that. So my eyes actually used to angle down. And then over time, as I got into the self-development, they actually angled up over time. It's crazy, but that's in that picture. So if I go back and show the people on here. So if you look, I don't know if you can see my mouse moving or not, yeah. but okay. So see, look how much this eye used to angle down right here. And on this side too, now equal on this side and actually angles up on my professional side, which we're going to talk about that in just a minute. <laughs> so that's just, a, that's how your faces can change. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because the first nice. thing that you learn is you'll come out and you start looking at your own face, right? Yeah. Um, I talked about this earlier. The real game changer for this is it's proactive instead of reactive, meaning that you can look up people ahead of time and just think, how do I best speak their language? And this will make more sense when I talk here in a minute. And speaking of Brad Lee, since I'll see him on Friday of next week, is his whole thing, if you are ever talked to him, is the first step of the sale that everybody forgets is preparation. And that's really what learning to read faces is. Hmm. Reactive skills, I think they're just important. You heard me talk about body language. These are two of my favorite books. For those of you who are listening, uh, What Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro, I recommend that book is the first one people pick up because it's how to understand other people based on their body language. Then you need to graduate to Janine Driver's book, which is you say more than you think because it's about examining your own body language. Now, the reason I want you to start with the blue one is we pay attention to other people. But since a lot of people spent two years in their house, Janine's book is even more important about reexamining our body language because we've gotten lazy. We, we forgot how to be around people. Right. 
we sat around, maybe we had pants on, maybe we had on shorts the entire time, right? Because you wanted to be here for Zoom. Yeah. But we forgot how to interact with people. And I don't know about you, but when things opened back up everywhere, it was awkward at first. I'm like, uh, uh, do you fist bump? Do you, I, I don't know what to do. But right. that's a really good book to pick up. Hmm. The problem is this, this day and age, more things are happening over the phone, over Zoom. And even if you get into a room like you and I are, well, laptops may be blocking away. And so you, you lose out on a lot of the body language. And let me tell you, I have a course on dating. It's called uh, looking for love and all the wrong faces.com. Same thing, right? You don't go out and meet people and use body language at first to meet someone. Most people are, are getting on apps first. And so they, you get it to see their picture and you get to see what they say about themselves. Well, if it's anything like a resume, there's partial truth in what they put on there. But if you have their picture, you can look and see what are things that you're going to get along on and what are things that you differ on. So, mm. and here for the picture, for the people who can't see it is when you're reading somebody's facial features, you're giving that eye contact and you're giving them your time and attention. If you're reading their body language, you're looking down and away from them. And so who would you rather talk to? Somebody who's looking you in the face? Like if I did the whole Zoom meeting this way, right? Your audience would lose interest in the heartbeat. But if I'm paying attention to where the camera is, people watch long. Right. And it's the exact same thing. So that's why I love teaching faces because you're focusing on them and people know when you're giving them your time and attention. Um, the first book I was always told to read how to win friends and influence people. Everybody should still read this one. But a lot of the book was, all right, you're going to go in their office. You're just going to look around and find things to talk about in their office, right? Pictures of their kids, a sporting symbol, you know, whatever they have on their desk. Well, most places you go this day and age, you can't go meet with people. And people may meet you in a coffee shop. So now you're just back to the person in their body language, but nothing else unless they've got stickers on their laptop, mm -hmm. right? Or you sitting next to me. And so for everybody who's listening, I was, we were on the plane. I went to go look and he was typing up, Landon was typing up really cool content on the course he was creating. I'm like, oh, I want to know what this guy's talking about. And so that's how we ended up talking. But yeah. that was something from, you know, uh, the book. But yeah, on, but a lot of people don't want to meet anywhere but a conference room, a coffee shop, things like that. So that skill was a great skill to have if people are still allowed to even decorate their office, but it's rare now. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something? No, I, I think that's a, uh, there's, when you have an opportunity to, to be in someone's presence, you're right. There's so many different things that they could, you know, the way they dress, um, if they're wearing any jewelry, I'm a huge fan of the Enneagram. Do, oh, yeah. you, uh, do you subscribe to a lot of uh, what the Enneagram says? Yeah. So I read into a lot of, matter of fact, I have the book um, on my way back to you or the road, I, the road back to you, the road back to you. Yeah. So I need to pick it back up because I started it and then I stopped it again. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a very, very fascinating book. And I've, I've actually taken a lot of that stuff to heart because it helps me understand people 10 times better. And you, you get into, I would say the ditch on the other side is you get into categories, you know, categorizing people yes. and then pre-categorizing that's a little bit dangerous. Um, Can be. Yep. I like to, you know, I like to, you're, you're uh, innocent until proven guilty, I would say, or like, I'm yes. going to give you all my trust first and then we're going to see what happens next. So yes. yeah, that's, that's a good point. As you've got an exercise coming up on this next slide here, which says, what do you see? What are we looking for? So what this is, is for people listening in, it's the judges off of the voice. So I like to always ask my audiences, who's seen the voice? And for those who haven't, it's basically people who get online, or I'm sorry, it's a TV show. And what they do is they sit with their backs to everybody. And if they like what the singer says, then they turn around to see what they actually look like. So what you see are four judges for the voice. But what I see when I look at all four of them are people who have very large ears, and more and smaller eyes. Now it's not, you don't directly compare eyes to ears because ears are always going to be larger. But when you look in proportion to their face, they have very large ears and they have small eyes. So these are all auditory people. So why is this important? I don't care about four celebrities. True. But if you're looking at somebody who has large ears and small eyes, then they tend to be auditory. So you say things like, Hey, do you hear where I'm coming from? Does this sound like a good idea? You know, you start saying auditory terms because now you're speaking their language. Wow. I was at an event with Steve Sims that we we're doing with a, it's called the Black Diamond Group. Great group to follow if you don't know who Sean and Lacey are. But um, we were at their event and one guy came up to me. He's like, oh my God, I get it. I'm like, what? And his name was Jake Hansen. And Jake said, 
I have never been able to really uh, get a good bond with my office manager. So when she emailed me and called me later, I said, I hear where you're coming from. It sounds like we're on the right path. You know, what else do you need to hear from me? And normally her answers are short and curt. And she spent all this time with him responding back and forth because all he did was he modified what he wanted to say to speaking her language and it created that connection. And so once that, when you learn to see that on people, if they have the larger ears, then I don't go to email, right? I send them an audio text or I'll call them on the phone, right? Or so there's so many things that you can change versus if they have smaller ears and their eyes look larger, then I send them a text or I send them a email. So you learn how to communicate with somebody and people will tell you, you can literally pull up. I did this for another group and I may have it in, in actually I do have it in here. I'm going to show you a slide in a few minutes where all I did was go and look up somebody's interview and it told me that they're kinesthetic by nature because we speak in how we think. So for example, I always say like, Hey, I'll see you later. Even if I'm having a phone call because I'm a visual learner. Mm. And so I will literally say that. All right. See you later. Hey, can't wait to see you. That's just how I talk. So it's crazy when you start getting into it. So using the proactive again, our buddy, Steve Sims, this is his LinkedIn profile. So people ask all the time, what if it's not a straight on professional photo? Not a problem. What can I still make out about Steve? Well, Steve has a rounded forehead. So he's an outside the box thinker. He's got high ears and low eyebrows. So if you think about data racing down your forehead to get into your eyes or your ears, when they're close to each other like that, that's people who understand things very, very quickly. Okay, hold on. Say that again. High sure. ears. High ears and low eyebrows. Okay. Because you're two sources of input, right? When we're born, if we're lucky enough to be born with sight, this is our primary way of learning. And then over time, we may become auditory or we may become kinesthetic. But if our ears are high, so high at the top and low eyebrows, you understand things very fast. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Steve here, let me, here you go right here. I'm looking See at how, my ears and eyes right now, bro. I can't, I can't still look at my video on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So well, keep going. You have, so here's something funny you and Steve have in common. You both have what's called chameleon eyebrows because I can't make out your shape unless I get closer to you because you have the light colored hair. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a consensus builder for you because it brings people closer. Now, what you do a better job of hold that on, I always tell that Steve mean? is. Hold on. Hold on. Really quick. Yeah. What's that yeah. mean? The chameleon eyebrows? No, the consensus builder. Tell me more about that. Oh, so that means that it's something that draws people towards you. So there's several things that are consensus builders. Rounded cheeks are consensus builders. Dimples, right? Like, have you ever looked at somebody who smiles with dimple and think, oh, those are ugly? No, they're called a consensus builder. People like them, but people read eyebrows all the time. They just don't realize it. And I'll show you a picture in a minute that's going to kind of creep you out. And I don't want to give too much away before we get there. But <laughs> when people can't make out your eyebrows, they have to get closer to you. Mm -hmm. So it's literally, there's so many things about your, your body. So there's a Cupid's bow right here. If you have a little arrow right here in your lower lip, that's literally a subconscious arrow. It says, listen to me when I talk. And so I'll tell <laughs> men, shave your beard so that people can see that. And women highlight it with lipstick. It's there to help you. It's insane. This is so freaking crazy. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so then flatter upper lip. So we say the phrase, keep a stiff upper lip. So if you see somebody with a flatter upper lip, they don't like talking about themselves, right? So the phrase, keep a stiff upper lip means like, well, you tell me if I say, Hey, Landon, keep a stiff upper lip. What does that mean? Like, don't, uh, yeah. Like don't overindulge. Um, yeah, don't, don't share your emotions. Share. Right. Don't, yeah. yeah. So when you see somebody with a flatter upper lip, you don't need to ask them a lot of personal questions because they feel like you're this right in front of them getting in their face. <laughs> For those of you listening on audio, Brian just like jolted towards the camera and put his, right. put his face right into the camera. <laughs> Got yeah. it. Okay. So they feel like you're intruding if they have that, Absolutely. This lip, which is like, that means that their lip is like straight across the top. Correct. So it's not a fuller upper lip. And then, so this is, and I can go on on this for days, as you can tell. This is why the number one plastic surgery right now is lip injections. Because nobody knows why. A few years ago, girls were just doing duck lips, but because this is your upper lip, it's your personal lip, your lower lip is your professional or external lip. And when you have larger lips, it's seen as come and talk to me about it. That's why for, for decades or centuries, women have wore lipstick, right? So what do we associate with red lipstick, right? 
it enhances lips and we think, oh, sexy. I want to go talk to right. it. Yeah, that's why I, that's the number one plastic surgery right now. It's crazy. Dude, so cool. So, <laughs> okay, keep going. So, you got yeah, the, so, you the chin extension. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, chin extension. So what that is, is if you've seen the movie 300, chins, when we say, hey, take one on the chin, it's how you handle adversity. So if you grow out the cool 300 beard, right, yeah. like they all did, that's oh, the whole reason why all the characters grew it out is because it's a chin extender. And so it says, I can handle a lot of adversity. So when's the last time you saw anybody who had a really big, cool 300 beard that was a pushover, right? Most times they're not. Now I tried to grow the cool 300 beard and I can't do it. Mine look more like, can you give me $3? So yeah, <laughs> not a good look at all. Yeah. I looked more homeless versus badass. I got to look at the three. I'm looking at the 300 cast right now, looking at their. Uh... Oh yeah. Look, Gerard Butler, right? He had that huge beard. Yeah, they all have just, and then even what's interesting too is like you look at their, uh, you look at their helmets, and their yeah. helmets even extend the chin down to here, even though it like exposes the mouth. Yeah. So if you read body language, when somebody's trying to extend their influence or whatever, they'll go like this and extend their chin. So there are ways to do it with facial hair if you're a guy. And, like the, the, uh, body. Sorry, yeah. sorry, doing this, <laughs> but like the 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 entrepreneur like uh, check mark picture, like the smile. Oh, yeah. Is that it's extended? That, or it's the the steeple, right? Or if you're in real estate for some reason, you should always turn to the side. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is so fascinating. As you guys can tell, we, I like lost my mind talking to Brian on the plane because I'm like, wait. Hold on. What about this yeah. person? And I'm pulling out my phone, like showing them, like, what is this person? That's the beauty of it. Once yeah. you learn it, you can do it. And people are like, oh, well, you're cold reading me because you're looking for me to nod and do all these things. I'm like, show me somebody on your phone. And yeah. that's where the real power of it comes in. So I, I mentioned this earlier. You can go and find people's interviews. So this was somebody who was asking me, hey, we want to meet this CEO. So I went and found an interview from this person and said, look, here is one of their interviews. And all I did was for the people listening is I just circled a lot of words because people will either use auditory phrases, visual phrases, or kinesthetic phrases. So this guy said, hey, sit down, take it and accept it, run the risk, embracing shift, uh, positioning yourself, backwards engineering, building, show yourself. Those are all kinesthetic words. So if you want to speak his language, if you're, if you're putting a PowerPoint back to him, then what I would do is use all kinesthetic language. Well, once you receive the product and you get a chance to really wrap your hands around it, you know, and get yourself dirty and I'll show this one. So people who aren't, aren't auditory aren't going to get this, but I always wear a three piece suit. Right. And the reason why is because I can't stand to wear jackets for long, but I roll up my sleeves. Now, if I was talking to this particular gentleman, I would wait until I was addressing him. And as I was using kinesthetic things, I would roll up my sleeves. Cause what do we roll up our sleeves to do? We roll up our sleeves to go to work. Yeah. Dude, so for anybody that's not, uh, for the people listening on podcast right now, again, highly recommend you go check this out on YouTube, but what, what he's done, Brian's actually like highlighted all of the different language. So sit down and take the medicine and accept, run the risk, embracing. Those are all like highlighted words inside of a, uh, like a recorded interview that's like printed out into text. And yeah. so this is fascinating from an email perspective, right? Like when you're reading someone's emails. Absolutely. Well, and I'll tell you the other side of this, and it's in the PowerPoint later. If I'm doing a presentation and I know who I'm presenting to, I put what their predominant language is, auditory, visual, or kinesthetic, but I pepper the other words in there because presentations get forwarded on. And so if you make it only auditory or only kinesthetic and a visual person reads it and there's not a word that says like, see or picture this or something, then you're not speaking to that person. So I focus on who's my intended audience but who else may it go forward to? Crazy, right? I feel like I'm anal I'm like psychoanalyzing all of my uh, emails now. Uh, like oh, I want to go back to them. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're going to get into showing people how to do it. And here's the best part about it. You're going to leave this podcast and understand the basics of eyebrows and it'll change your life. I guarantee you, you can assume I'm full of it, but you'll be reaching back out to me later. And there'll be a QR code at the end with a cheat sheet. But I guarantee you at the end of this, you're going to think, what the hell? Because it's something that's available to us all the time. You can use it. And even if you get the eyebrows wrong, you're giving people your time and attention. And that's what creates connection. Mm -hmm. So 
We're gonna start with eyebrows or with the section of my course I like to call just browsing. Yes, not only do I speak on stage, I have a light speed course on this stuff and I teach it to corporations for salespeople, coworkers, things like that. And I have the dating course too, because hey, guess what? It translates, everybody's got a face. So in the just browsing section, this is what I was hinting towards earlier, is if you don't think eyebrows are important, go and Google people without eyebrows. And what will show up in Google is a bunch of celebrities that if you take away their eyebrows, you don't recognize, <laughs> right? Dude, Nick Cage kills me. Nick Cage looks oh. like a woman without eyebrows. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, look at Angelina <laughs> Jolie here. I mean, it's but this all I did, go into Google and type in people without eyebrows. Look at Ryan Reynolds. Dude, look, he's like, he's got my man crush, like for movies. Hey, where, Ryan where, Reynolds where? is my guy. He's in the lower right-hand corner. Oh my, I didn't even recognize him. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right? So <laughs> if you don't think we pay attention to eyebrows, go and Google people without eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> and then why do I like eyebrows? Because again, eyebrows lead to eye contact and you can see them from close or far away. So for the people listening, there's three people and they put them in different positions of first and front, middle, and then back. And no matter what position they're in, you can still make out their eyebrows. Hmm. Now, why are eyebrows important? If we're lucky enough to be born with sight, this is what helps protect it, keeps things out of our eyes, right? Sweat, dirt, you name it. The cool thing about eyebrows is they also tell us how do people filter data just like they used to filter things for our eyes. So how do they take in and how do they process information? And the reason why eyebrows are so important is because again, when we're born, we don't understand language. But if we're lucky enough to be born with sight, then immediately we can look around and take in input. And so that's why all babies, when you look at them, have large eyes. And then over time, the eyes may get smaller and the ears may get larger because they may, once they understand language, they may lean towards being auditory versus visual. Mm. So that's why all of our faces change over time. And if you think about eyebrows like speed bumps, if there's a speed bump in the middle of the road, you can kind of go fast. You have to slow down and go over the speed bump. And then you can kind of go fast to get to the, the end of the street. However, if I put the speed bump right at the end of the street before the stop sign, then I can just race down that street and only have to slow down at the last minute. Well, it's no different with our eyebrows because if you think of data racing down our forehead, if my eyebrow's high, then I have to slow down, go over the speed bump, and then go into my eye. However, if my eyebrow is right on top of my eye and it's a low eyebrow, then data can race right down my forehead and then slow down just the last minute before it goes in. And so people with high eyebrows need time to think about things. People with low brow or low eyebrows, they understand things very fast. Now, here's a fun one for you. Go and Google low brow humor and high brow humor. Mm -hmm. Low brow humor is like jackass you, or three stooges. You see some type of physical humor and you laugh immediately. High brow humor is somebody tells you a joke and you have to think about it and then you laugh. So that's why I say it's part of our everyday language and now you understand how to understand other people based on their facial features. So to show you an example of what it would look like, here's a lady who has a high eyebrow. So the way to think about it is if you put, how many fingers can you fit in between the eyebrow and the eye if you're looking at it? So one eyebrow, two, or one finger, two fingers, you name it. The higher the eyebrow is, the more time that they need to think about a decision. So if you meet somebody who has a high eyebrow and you force them to make a quick decision, you're going to frustrate that person. And so there's a lot of people we know who are, oh, I'm going to do the one call close. This is it. Great. You'll make a sale, but you'll never have a customer because this is going to be somebody who suffers from buyer's remorse because you force them to make a decision before they had time to evaluate it. Now, on the opposite side of that, if they have a very low eyebrow, like we we're talking about earlier, low brow and high ears, but a low brow means they understand things very fast because that data can race right down their forehead and go in. So if you have somebody who interrupts you a lot, I used to get very frustrated by that. But what I realized is people with low eyebrows understand things very fast and they're so excited they want to help you get there too. So they're not doing it to be rude. They're trying to help. And that's the number one thing I've learned is once you learn to understand a face, you give grace. And I realized that Ryan, it's on purpose because I was raised in the day and age of Dr. Seuss. But literally by giving grace of looking at somebody's face, things that used to bother me, I just look at them and go, oh, that's the way they're wired. And this is one of them is if people interrupt me and I see their eyebrows very close to their eye, it's just part of their personality. 
So if you have that, then you just need to work on patience and letting people get there as fast as you did. I have a question. Sure. So with that, um, have you done some work overlaying the disc profile Enneagram? Like, have you overlaid that with this to kind of like cross check yourself at all? Have you ever done that? Yes. So one of my former mentors, Mark Turner is disc certified. And we talk about stuff like this all the time or Joe Ingram. If you, if you don't know Joe Ingram, you need to know Joe Ingram. I'll have to introduce you guys, but yeah. he's a big disc guy as well. So he's been in the automotive industry. He teaches sales. Um, he has a podcast as well. And a lot of times he'll sit and talk and I'll join his Wednesday war games group. And we'll talk about disc versus facial features. And you are a, can I, can I guess, I'm going to guess. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to assume I S mm-hmm. but you used to be something totally different. Is that fair to assume? Yeah, I was never a driver. Honestly, in most of my life, I was more of a kind of sit back and go with the flow. But it did change a little bit more. And as I learned face reading, again, that's what got me out of my shell. Because I learned to quit focusing on me and what I was thinking in my head and get out of the prison of my own mind and into the present moment. Hmm. So what, what did you used to be? Or Was I right? Yeah, you were right. <laughs> Let's go. I just used to be a lot more of an introvert. <laughs> That's awesome. You're, you're, you're very, um, from a support standpoint, like you're, you're such a great teacher. So you have the ability, like you desire the, the influential side, but you're also like patient enough to teach people as I've interrupted you throughout this a little bit. I love it. I can tell like, you just have that, that patience to, uh, to teach people. I love people. Again, that's where I lived in the terror in the prison of my own mind for so long. Um, Look, being a speaker, the best thing about it is a few things. One, you get to see the world. Number two, you get to talk to people and teach people something. And then number three is you get to go to places that I'm, I'm sitting there taking notes when the other speakers are talking, right? So I don't just show up, get on stage and get down. I'm down there taking notes. Like the last event I went to, I think I put, I took eight pages of notes from the other speakers, mm-hmm. right? Because we're all learning all the time and the ability to help people is just mind blowing. So yeah, you're doing a great job. So let's, let's, let's see it. All right. So uh, what I have is another picture here of somebody who took their kids in. And I like to show this one because you can see one of the ladies who's talking to a doctor. And so she has high eyebrows. So let's say that this, the kid that's in the picture needed a medical procedure done. You wouldn't say, okay, we're going to have to go back right now. You would have to give them time because the high eyebrows give them time to evaluate things. Right. And versus if it's their eyebrows sits on top of their eye, then, you know, you can talk very fast. So there's people make the wrong assumption of the time spent with someone is positive time or quality time. So, oh, man, I just spent two hours with this CEO. Yeah. But if the CEO, their eyebrows were right on top of their eye, you may have only after 15 minutes, they heard what you needed. And now you wasted an hour and 45 minutes of their time. Wow. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you tricks here in a minute. Once you see the three shapes of eyebrows of combinations of things to look at. I love so, that. uh, I like, yeah, I like to show this again. It's just all the different eyebrows that people have and the height. So you can, when you're dealing with people, you know, who do you need to start with? If you're presenting to a group and you see somebody has high eyebrows, you start with the higher eyebrow person. You make eye contact with them. You kind of talk to them and then you work your way to the lower eyebrow people. Because again, the people, with the high eyebrows need more time. What's interesting is I went to, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Those, so those are your um, disc profile C's, Enneagram threes, right? Like the people higher, higher eyebrows. Am I correct on that? Uh, so the Enneagram part, I'm, I'm not that familiar with, but yes, on the C's, yes. Cool. Sorry, continue. Yeah. Um, I went to a company that I was talking to at one point. I did a presentation <laughs> or a group and I just went and I grabbed their C-suite off of their website, right? <laughs> Which I just went to their company website. So here's another tip or trick. If you're ever going to go meet with someone, you don't know who you're going to meet with, then what you do is you go and to their about us because the decision maker may be this C-suite that's on their website, right? Or I get there early and I say, hey, I'm not sure who I'm meeting with today. Can I get a business card in case I forget before I leave? And I get there 15 minutes early and I go and look them up on LinkedIn or social media. So I can do those little tips and tricks even before I get there. But for everybody who's listening in, this is on the company's about us website for all their C-suite executives and all of their eyebrows are very close to their eyes. So, you know, they understand things very quickly. So again, you get straight to the point 
um, uh, when you're dealing with them. Well, I'll, I'll talk about more about straight in a minute as a port. When their eyebrows are low brown, they get it fast, right? So if you think about a car, you start off in low gear to take off fast. It's only once you get to high gear, you can't go straight there. You have to work your way up. So if you think about it like that, the higher the eyebrow is, the longer it's going to take you to get there. That's how much longer they need to make a decision. Mm. Make sense? Yep, it does. All right. So we're going to jump into the three basic eyebrows. How are we doing on time? We still good? We're great, dude. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's three basic shapes to eyebrows. So we all played the game as a kid, put the right peg in the right hole. Eyebrows are no different. So the three basic eyebrows are straight eyebrows, angled eyebrows, and rounded eyebrows. So straight eyebrows, get straight to the point. Don't waste my time. Angled eyebrows, what's my angle? Help me understand it first so I can help other people. And rounded eyebrows thinks about the people around them first and themselves second. So we'll go more in depth with that. So back to our friend Brad. Brad has straight eyebrows, right? And yeah. so straight eyebrows, get straight to the point. Give them facts, figures, how can it be used? And stop talking and ask what other information do you need? So if I was a realtor, hey, what are you looking for? A three, three, a two, two, and then just stop talking. Okay, what do you look? What else are you looking for? Interest rate. Okay, that's it. Um, if you're if you're selling, I don't know. You can give me anything you want. Selling media packages to them. Okay, how many impressions do you want? How much of this? You know, what's your rate? Just ba basic facts and figure questions, right? And then you stop talking because the longer you talk, the more you lose it. So yeah. you give them the minimum information for them to ask additional questions. Okay. Wow. And then they're going to be like, man, he, he asked such great questions. Exactly. Versus he wasted so much of my time. Yeah. yeah. That's why, you know, if somebody gives you an hour, doesn't mean you have to take an hour. Right. And people wow. don't understand that. <laughs> you know? So second eyebrow is an angled eyebrow. I actually have this. And this is an angled eyebrow is like a, a triangle at the top. And that is help me understand it. So then I can help other people. I got this angled eyebrow when I became a corporate trainer, because I had to learn the material. And then I was a sales engineer after that, so that I could then demo it to other people. So when you see an angled eyebrow, they need to be in control of it and they need to understand it. So using the different sales technique, the straight eyebrow gets straight to the point. Here's the benefit that you're going to get from my package. Here's the cost. That's it. Angled eyebrow. Once you understand our product and once you understand this, then you can help your coworkers, you know, your customers. So you focus on them first and then other people, right? Now, here's the cool part. Angled people, because they have to kind of take ownership of it and understand it. These are your big advocates. This is who you ask for testimonials from after they're done, because they have to, again, like when I was a corporate trainer, I had to learn it so that I could teach other people. Well, they take it on, it becomes a part of them. And then they become your advocate or your ambassador. So we think of angles as bad. They're not always bad. So when you involve them in the process, if you're doing something, not only do you tell them what's in it for them, but then you say like, hey, what do you think? Because you're including them in the process. Make sense? Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> All right. Last one. Oh, and I didn't even talk about other people here. So I've got it. And then also you can see on this side, it's angle. Now, here's what's interesting. I'll use myself now. Yeah. We're all, we're all a little bit two faced. And what I mean by that is our face is literally broken up into two different quadrants. So the right side is our external or our professional side. The left side is our personal or internal side. And an easy way to remember that since you were recently married is if I ask you, Hey, are you married? It's a personal question and a wedding ring would be on your left hand. Okay. So easy way to think of where would a wedding ring be? That's the personal side of their face. Now I do have to throw out the caveat of that's in the U S because in a lot of Europe, wedding rings go on the right hand. So I oh. like to use the U S of easy way to remember it is to ask, Hey, are you married? That's a personal question. So this is the personal side of their face where a wedding ring would be. Hmm. Yes. And, so and you know, at the beginning, so the personal, so your personal side, mm -hmm is very much like angled because right. you desire to help others personally, but then professionally, are you more rounded on the other side? No. So this one is actually my, my professional side. And so that's has the bigger angle. This one has gotten it more over time, but this one, like, so if you look at the picture here, right, 
This is my professional one. Yep. And then this is my personal one. So this is more straight on my personal side and angled on my professional side. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. I was, I was reversing my, like how I was looking at it. So, okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, yeah. On, I'm on the same page with you now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you always ask them like, Hey, are you married? It's a personal question. Where would their wedding ring be? On the list. Right. Yep. Got it. So cool. <laughs> Tell me this stuff changed my life. So then uh, rounded eyebrows rounded eyebrows think about the people around them first so if you talk to them about oh well here's how you're going to benefit and you're going to receive this that's not speaking their language they're always thinking about the people around them first and themselves second so you'll see this on a lot of caretakers right a lot of moms a lot of people who are always thinking about other people first and so the two pictures i like to grab are elon musk and oprah why elon he could have after paypal especially hey, like he's a local boy for you right after he sold paypal he could have just retired, lived a life of luxury, but what did he go to? Electric cars and other things, right? Trying to get people to Mars. He's not thinking about him. He's thinking about other people first. He's so he, and he's got rounded eyebrows. And then Oprah Winfrey, right? Everybody knows who, who Oprah is, but what do you know about Oprah? Not a lot unless you've done research, right? Because Oprah is known for bringing in guests to help her audience and for giving things to her audience, right? You get a car, you get a car, you get a car. Yeah. But how much do you really know about Oprah? Right? Yeah. It's good. So, yeah. So when, and using this in speaking terms, look, I still get nervous when I get on stage from time to time. Right. I mentioned that earlier. Who do I look for in the audience? People with rounded eyebrows. You know why? Cause I know they're there to support me. They're not in there thinking, Oh, what's my angle? Help me understand it first. I look for rounded eyebrow people because I know they're going to smile. They're going to be nodding and I feel comfortable and supported by them. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Is this blowing your guys' mind? The guy, everyone listening to this podcast, I don't know if it, hopefully this is blowing your mind as much as it is mine because this is, this is just the craziest. I, I love this stuff so much. Like I'm going to, I'm going to totally look at people differently after this. And you will. And here's the right. You're going to deepen all the connections you already had because you've taken people for granted like we all do. Mm -hmm. But once all you have to think is, okay, what shape is their eyebrow? And they're going to realize, oh, they're paying attention to me. That's going to be number one. And then if you make these little tweaks, then all of a sudden they're like, God, we get along so much better now. <laughs> and all you're doing is you're literally, their face is telling you how to treat them and you're just adapting to it. So. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why rounded. So I mentioned earlier that uh, your angled eyebrow people—they're the ones who are your advocates who leave you good testimonials and everything. Mm -hmm. That's perfect because the rounded eyebrow people want to know other references and other people's opinions before they make a decision. So they're going to read the testimonials your eye angled people or your angled people put out there. It's crazy. But, huh? your, but your enneagram eights or your 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 uh, disc profile Ds—they only they only care about like, okay, what's it going to do for me? Tell me, exactly. tell me the results. Tell me the stats. Like exactly. <laughs> tell <Yep>. me quickly. <laughs> See, and that's, and you brought up a perfect thing. Is this a hundred percent true? No. Like there are things that will, I'll get wrong. Cause there a lot of times people will have something on their face. And I'll ask them. They're like, Nope, that's not me. Now it either it is, and they just don't recognize that about themselves, but what's the success rate on this? High nineties, high, high nineties. Now I will tell you, the number one thing is if somebody has a flatter upper lip and they have, and somebody else volunteers them, I'm like, I already know they're going to say this is all wrong because they don't like the idea that somebody else can understand them based on just what their face says about them. And that flatter upper lip, don't share your feelings. That's like, I don't want people to know me. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, wow. yeah, it's crazy. So uh, I kind of alluded to this earlier. Now you can just walk up and you look at people. And for the people listening, there's three different people on the screen. You've got over here, the lady on the left has rounded eyebrows, right? So not only are they rounded, but they're high. So, you know, she's always thinking about the people around her and she needs time to make up her mind. Then you've got over here on the far right, he's got straight eyebrows that are close to his eye, right? So get straight to the point and don't waste my time. Mm -hmm. And then the lady in the middle here, she has on her, where would her wedding ring be? Over here on the left, right? So on her personal side, it's more straight, but on her professional side, it's angled. And we can be a different person at home is who we are in, at, to the external world, right? Yeah. Now we may be consistent, but there could be little subtle differences. So kind of going back over it again, here's an easy diagram to look at is which side is your business, which side's your personal side. 
So in the picture, for the people who are listening, on the left-hand side is Bruce Wayne. On the right-hand side is Batman. Same thing with Batgirl here. And then there's a picture of some wedding rings on the left hand. So it's an easy way to remember it. Got it. Yep. Or another trick I like to put in here because some people are more uh, visual is which hand can you make an L with? Well, personal ends with L. So you can say, which one's my business side? Which one's my personal side? Personal side ends with L. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you start looking at people differently again. So what do you see? Well, now there's two of the people here who have glasses, right? But what's interesting is the frames of their glasses match their eyebrows. And so if you can't, yeah, if you can't see somebody's eyebrows through their, their glasses, then their glass frames tell you what their eyebrows are. Yeah. This guy in the middle, uh -huh. very flat eyebrows. Yep. Get the, point. the guy in the left though, high yeah. eyebrows and rounded eyebrows. So <laughs> likely to be maybe like very supportive people around him. Um, probably like a more of a caretaker, right? Like um, yep. a high S on the disc profile. Yep. That's good. See, and so you can start just looking at people. So as you go across, <laughs> yeah, rounded on this side, a little more straight, angled, angled, and then rounded on this side, angled on this side. It's crazy, right? So you're going to start <laughs> looking at everybody differently. Yeah, this is nuts. <laughs> yeah. So when you, so here's the way it's fun. People ask, well, what if I'm dealing with them in their personal life and their professional life? Well, then if I'm asking them about personal life, left hand, right? This is your personal eyebrow. And it can be different from my professional eyebrow. Um, so now we're going to go over to eyes real fast. And then we're going to start to wrap it up because <laughs> I know we've been talking for an hour. So I like to call this one more than meets the eye because I, I like phrases that make people remember what I'm talking about. Yep. So there's three basic parts of the eye that you can look at with people. And that is the upper eyelid, the angle of their eyes, and the placement of their eyes. So when you start talking to people, easy way to remember it is the more lid you see, the more they think in terms of we. So those are people who love to do things with other people, right? They don't like doing things alone <laughs> versus the people that you can see more of their eye because they don't have an upper eyelid. They think in terms of I. So here's where this comes in handy. Um, let's go on the romantic side. And when I say romantic, look, you can be married, you can be dating, you can be whatever. If one person has a fuller eyelid and the other one has very little eyelid, they're always going to be at odds because the fuller eyelid, where are we going? What are we going to do? I don't know. I'm going to go do this. But you can learn to negotiate. Hey, I know you like to do things, you know, together a lot, but I also need some personal time for me. So why don't we schedule out, you know, a date for Saturday and on Sunday, I'm going to run around and do these things I need to do. So by marriage, <laughs> <laughs> I think we actually talked about that on the plane. Right? Dude, yeah. So yeah, she has uh, very uh, large, like large eyelids and yep. um, I think angled and rounded both hundred uh percent. -huh. So like, yeah, just being, just being real with you. We, I am, I am not quality time, but she is high quality time. Yep. Not that I don't love spending time with her. I just like to know like when it is that I'm going to do that. And then I want to like have my time to like decompress from the week. And so you're just like reading my mail over here to give you guys some context to how real this is. Like it's hundred percent true, <laughs> at least. Yeah. From, so oh, you can look at somebody's face and you can tell whose words of affirmation. There's a facial feature for it. Physical touch. There's a facial feature for it. Um, so then there, what physical touch words of affirmation, gift giving um, a lot of the rounded features because they're always taking care of other people. Right. Um, acts of service kind of fall into that same category. So it, it's pretty crazy what the face tells you about somebody. So a lot of times I'll go to events and they'll hire me for entertainment. Like let's say it's a corporate event or it's a wedding even, right? I call it paid practice and I'll sit down and I'll, couples will come up and I'll say, okay, do you want to know what you have in common or what you have in different? And a lot of times I go, oh, tell us what's different. I'm like, okay, this, this, and this, this. And they're like, why are we paying for a marriage counselor? I'm like, I know your face is literally telling you about each other. So, but yeah, so easy way to think about it, the larger the lid, the more the more lid you see, the more they think in terms of we. So when you're talking to them, hey, where are we going? What are we doing? And if you have no eyelid or very little eyelid, then you know, I'm going to go do this. So how do you meet in the middle? So you tell a person with a thin upper eyelid and they see somebody with a thicker eyelid and like, hey, come on, let's go do something, right? And then you make the other person happy. You just include them in a little bit more. Eye angle. This one's a fun one for me. So our eyes can go three different angles. I don't know if this that one won't show up. That's the only downside about having a screen. I always got to find something that will show up. Okay, my screen, uh, that'll show up for a little bit. So with my Apple remote here, if I was to draw an invisible line from 
the inside of my eye to the outside of my eye, would it angle up, would it angle medium, or would it angle down? And so when you look at that, we've got three people on the screen here. So the first lady that you see in the far left in the first picture, hers angles up slightly. So she always sees the upside of things. So when you're talking to her, you talk about the features, the benefits, what are the positive things about it? The next gentleman down, his eyes angled down. So he thinks about the problem. So when you see somebody whose eyes angled down, you don't have to go, oh, pessimist. You can reframe it as, this is a person who can think about what problems may lie ahead, right? Where are the potholes? What do we need to avoid in the future? This is your person. So using these in, as a sales example, if I went in to go do a presentation and everybody in the room's eyes angled up, I'm gonna talk about why our product is the best product known to man. You know, what, you know, what are the features? What are the benefits with it? Why, hands down, we're the product they need. If I go in and I, need, I see some people with their eyes angled down, I'm gonna talk about how this is our fourth prototype and what we learned from the failure of our first three prototypes. Because mm -hmm. now I'm speaking his language because I talk about the problems that we had and how we would fix those problems. Because they don't believe that everything's just gonna work. And then if it's a balanced view, you can talk about pros and cons. I kind think mine, mine are balanced, right? Yeah, yours are balanced. Yeah, because I, I, I have no problem like listing out. I, I feel that like if, if there's a, an idea that someone has or even that I have, I'd be like, okay, like let's, let's list the pro cons of that. Like what's the, you know, yeah. I don't try and sell myself on it. I also like look at the downsides, so. Well, and that's what's important. And that's where the, the first two, the upside and the downside, if you, let's say that the two people in this picture, so her eyes are angled up, his are angled down. Mm -hmm. If she starts talking, she only sees the positive. Well, the guy who can see the problems thinking, look, you're just wearing rose colored glasses. You're not paying attention to reality. And in the inverse, if the guy who's, who's always thinking about what can go wrong, starts talking to the girl who's got the upward angled eyes, She's going to shut down because she's like, all he is is a negative Nelly. I'm so tired of all the negativity he brings. So when you, again, this is where grace comes in. When you look at somebody and you can see, okay, that's just how they take in the world. You don't take it as negativity anymore. You just go, that's their perspective. And it doesn't mean that my perspective is right or wrong or anything else. That's just how their perspective works. And that's why I mean by the grace. That's so cool. Yeah. So you can again start looking at people and now you see things like on a picture on the screen. We've got a guy on the left here, a little bit fuller upper lid. So he's a wee person, equal eyes, right? You got over here, no upper eyelid in the middle picture. So, you know, she's fine doing things by herself. And again, hers on her personal side kind of angles down a little bit and it angles up a little bit in her professional life. So it could be that she hated her life growing up. She loves her job. And this is where you can start looking <laughs> at people so much different. I know. Trust me, I did the same faces. And then the last one, look, he's got very angled eyebrows, but look how full his upper lids are and what a wee person he is, right? And look, both of his eyes angle up. So he now really you, wants to teach people. Yes, he's got to understand it. So then he can help other people. And because he's got those big full lids, he's a wee person all the way around. Wow. Yeah. Huh. You, you look at her, look how straight her personal eyebrow is. I get straight to the point and look how rounded it is on that side. Now, here's what's crazy about her. Look at how her personal eye is kind of closed off. Look how large her professional eye is. And so what do our eyes do when we're kids? If we're scared of something, we go. Oh. So as adults, our eyes close because it's self-protection. So in this picture, she doesn't really like her, her personal life, but she's very open to taking things in on her professional life. I'm, I'm, I'm analyzing that for a second. So oh, yeah. she, she is, she is, she's not open on. So see how much smaller look. So literally if you take block off half of her face, right. Mm -hmm. Block off mm -hmm. the left side or her personal side and look at, look at it at her uh, professional side. Right. Yeah. Look at how much larger her professional eye is. And I keep looking away <laughs> cause I have a screen over here. Um, Look how much larger this eye is on her yeah, versus right. this eye. Holy crap. That's so cool. So she, you inferred from that. I'm just repeating this so I understand it further. You infer from that that she loves, like she's excited about her future. 
about like what's ahead of her from a professional side of things, but maybe growing up or on the personal side, like things aren't going so well. So get to the point. Her eyes, she's literally not as open to talking about and dealing with her personal life as she is her professional life. Got it. Yep. Got it. Dude, what, what gets me is that the, the guy that's the we people on the, the right next to it, or right next yep. to it. Yep. You could just tell that guy like wants to help people for sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But did you really, when you first saw him, would you have thought that until, but now that you've seen this, and this is what I love about face ring. Look, you're going to leave today and it's going to change how you interact with everybody. Totally. So the reason Brad's letting me talk at his event next week is it's going to be for uh, salespeople who do like door to door sales and things like that. So I taught roofers and people how, like when you walk up, you look at the three eyebrows and you know, immediately, you know, how should you address them? If it's straight eyebrows, okay, here's what we're in the neighborhood for this or that. You know, if it's rounded eyebrows, you talk about other people first, like, you know, um, and then if it's an angled eyebrow, help them understand it so they can explain it to other people in their family. And then, you know, based on the eyebrow height, it, is it, should I try and close the deal now? Or should I just give them time and say, hey, I'll be back next week. I mean, you can tell all these things from people immediately. Fascinating. I love that. I love, I'm absolutely going to take that, that uh, from a tactical perspective of not just trying to like mow people down when it right. comes to closing the deal. Like if I, if they've got a lot of space on their, yeah. on their uh, eyelids that, or excuse me, their eyebrows are higher up. I'm going to remember that now. Yeah. And so you know that they just need time. So if you do try and mow them down, you may make the sale, but you've lost a customer. Right. And you're going to have buyer's remorse and they're going to say, force me to do that deal. Mm -hmm. Versus some people, you just have to give them time to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do this. This was um, one I did for a, an automotive, an RV dealership. So my, after we went through the training, I asked him, all right, when you're going to talk to him, how would you approach the man or woman? So she's got high rounded eyebrows. So if I'm going to talk to her, hi, she's going to need more time. So I'll talk to her first. Rounded. Oh, hey, so you're going to be buying this RV. Who are you going to go visit? And who's going with you on the trip? So I don't ask her, hey, where are you going? What do you want to see? Right. Mm -hmm. I ask, who's going with you? Who are you going to go visit? Because she's a, she thinks about uh, the people around her first and herself second versus him. He's straight to the point. Hey, what would you like to know about the car? Would you like to know the miles per gallon? You want to know what the interest rate is? Do you want to know the sticker <laughs> price? Change Dude, this world. Is, oh my gosh. This is, this is like a masterclass guys of reading people. This is the create, and you're so right. Like Hey, I know that this is all about you and your family getting to spend more time together because it's just so there important. And uh, look, I know you care about the fuel efficiency of this ride, Paul. If that's your, if yeah. that's your call. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's look, you, you and I have only spent 60 minutes together and look how much you already know about how to talk to somebody. Yeah. I can quit giving away so much. I'm going to have to trim this back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm probably going to take your course too. So let's be yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so look, the cool thing about it is there's a few steps. Number one, you just go look them up on LinkedIn or somewhere. You find a good picture. So this is if you're doing it proactively. You find one that's straight on because if you tilt your, or angle your head, then it throws off the eye angle and everything else. And then you analyze their face. Now, I, I just taught you eyebrows and eyes, right? But there's two ways to read faces. And that is what stands out. Like if a characteristic was to draw your face, what would they over exaggerate that makes that stands out on your face? Or like I do eyebrows, and then I do eye angle and I do upper lip. Those are my top three because it tells me everything about somebody. All right. So you can find either what stands out on their face or what are you specifically looking for? Then you just think of who am I, you know, how do I translate to speak their language and make sure again, if it's going to go to other people, add in auditory, visual, and kinesthetic terms. So that way you're speaking everybody's language. So who am I going to meet? What do I read on their face? And how should I modify my approach when I'm talking to them? That's it. So I know we spent a lot of time today um, for people who scan the QR code that'll give you the three eyebrows, the basic shapes, and the lead you to my website, which is settleskills.com for anybody who's just listening auditory uh, or on the podcast. So what questions you got? Dude, I have so, <laughs> so many questions. Um, that was incredible. So first of all, thank you so, so much for providing so much value. I mean, dude, that literally blew my mind. Um, I bet you get standing ovations for that same presentation. It is. So it, there's one of two reactions. One is, oh God, I gotta go talk to him. Right. And the other one is, oh, I don't want him to see me. 
<laughs> so you know, it's <laughs> where people are, right? Um, so it's interesting because if I'm speaking at an event, sometimes I'll go in the night before and I'll analyze faces to just kind of teach people about it. So when I get up on stage, people are taking notes voraciously. And then otherwise, when I get off stage, that's that celebrity-like thing. So imagine I go to events where there's some pretty big name speakers, but guess who's always got people standing around him afterwards? And that's me. Because we all want to know more about ourselves. And we all want to feel seen and heard and connected, right? And so people walk up and they're like, oh, wait, tell me about my girlfriend. Or tell me about my husband. Or tell me about, you know, you name it. And what I love about this is there's very few universal skills that can help you in every area of your life. This has done that for me. And it's a learned skill. That, the most important thing that people need to know today is I wasn't born with it but it's something that you can pick up so easy. You guys can go back and watch this episode and you're going to understand people based on just eyebrows, right? And then you just learn and expand from there, but it will change your life. It really will. So as we, as we kind of depart here, I want you to read my face and then like, do you want me to pull up a picture? What do you want me to do? Oh no, you can, we can do it with what you've got up right now because okay. we already talked about, so we talked about your chameleon eyebrows. So when people are looking at you right now, they can't see what shape your eyebrows are. So that's a consensus builder that comes in. You also have what we talked about earlier, the high ears and low eyebrows. So what that is, is you're somebody who understands things so much faster than other people that your big frustration is, why don't they get it as fast as I do, right? <laughs> and <laughs> see, when people laugh and turn red, you know you're right. Yeah. Um, no, you yeah. stick out a little bit. So you want to hear how everybody else is going to do it, but you like to do things your own damn way anyway. And what goes in with that also is you have a brow ridge. So that's this like area right here. So brow ridge people want to understand every step of the process. So it goes all the way across from left to right or right to left, whatever, because I'm looking at myself in reverse. So those are people that if I go, okay, here's step one, here's step four, you're gonna go, whoa, whoa, what happened to two and three? And that's because you want to reverse engineer the process, right? You want to understand it to that level. Um, we talked about Eyes are equal so that you're not overly optimistic. You're not pessimistic. You're just kind of who you are, but you also have the recessed eyes. So what people confuse about you is because you're kind of quiet at times and you're just sitting back, you're always watching and evaluating. People just don't know it. They think you're just chilling out. You're constantly evaluating because that's the recessed eye factors. You're always taking it all in, right? Mm -hmm. um, good, strong, rounded chin. So you love to stand up for the people you care about. So when we say take one on the chin, it's a boxing term, but I actually just posted about this on Instagram the other day, but chins tell us how people handle adversity and criticism, right? So big rounded chin is you will stand up and take a beating for everybody you care about. And that's kind of part of who you are, right? The flatter upper lip, don't like talking about yourself until you feel comfortable with someone, right? Then once you feel comfortable, totally fine. And then, uh, not that strong a jaw. So you're not super stubborn. Like you can make an opinion, but you're not just going to, latch into everything just for the hell of it right mm -hmm. and then um can't tell i'd have to look up pictures to see the rest because it's a little bit dark in there so give me one second Let me okay your instagram again there we go yeah so while you're doing that i want to say something um specific to oh what was it oh reverse engineering so i use that term a lot which is really funny just to begin with like i say that constantly <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yep and my wife and I were talking about this the other day of, so specifically with like sales funnels and marketing funnels, mm -hmm. I, rather than paying someone to build one for me, I have the deep, deep desire to understand it from start to finish, because how in the world am I supposed, supposed to fix something if I don't understand all of the pieces to it? Right. And I just thought that was very interesting that like the, the brow ridge specifically relates to that. So I'm looking, a lot of your stuff is videos. Let me see. Oh, okay. Here we got a good, we'll get a good stoic picture of you here. So yeah, uh, give nice. me one second. Yeah. My, uh, my, um, what do you call it? My, my, my chin extension went away with my beard. So I don't have that. I, know. <laughs> I didn't recognize you first when you did, when you got rid of it. All right. So, so that's, that's funny. Actually, Megan, uh, I remember the first time I shaved, um, first time I shaved in front of her because I, I had always had something even more like, yeah, that was like at its, at its peak. Right. Um, very, very different. So we're going to, we're going to psychoanalyze this picture for anybody that's not watching. You guys should go watch this. He's psycho or he's analyzing my face when I used to have a beard, which is right. fascinating already. So you look here like rounded forehead. Look, you, it literally is rounded. So again, that's an outside the box thinker. So there's three different types of foreheads, but you have a rounded kind of like Steve Sims does. 
Then we kind of talked about a little bit of a flatter upper lip, so you can't see a lot of it. But what I would recommend, same thing I recommend Steve Sims, see if you trim around here, I can tell how much more of your lip is there or not, right? Then we talked about the chin extender here. So how you handle adversity and criticism, stuff like that, right? Um, so we talked about the ears here, stand out away from your head. So you're going to listen to how other people do it, but you're going to do it your own way instead of being a conformist, which doesn't surprise me being an entrepreneur and everything, right? Now, if you go like from here to here and you do it on the opposite side, it's a little bit harder. So this isn't a good example of what I meant by it's better when the picture is straight on is you can't see the full face, right? But the way that you look at how much energy does somebody have, think of cheeks like gas gauges. So the farther out it goes from the nose, the more people can keep going and going. So you tend to outlast a lot of people because a lot of people have inset, which is they're sprinters and you're more of a marathon, right? So like this, this is the gas gauge, like left to right from my, no my yeah, nose, from away empty. from the nostril, away from the, the bridge of the nose and out towards the ears. The, the wider out it is, the more that people are like a marathoner. So the closer people are your sprinters. So if you're dealing with somebody at work, whose cheeks are very inset, you know, that's somebody who may do the, um, oh God, there's a, I want to say it's the tomato method, but that's not the right one. There's a work for 45 minutes and take 15 minutes off. Oh, that's yeah. that kind of worker. I forget what it's called. There's a setting in uh, that you can set up on your uh, browser that tells you work for 45 and take a break. I'm but, not that um, person. I've tried to be that person, but I can't do it. I, I actually don't do well with that. I am the same way because when I'm in something, I'm in it, mm -hmm. right? Now yeah. here you also have your nose, right? Is a long nose. So when you see long nose, you think long range planner. So you're not thinking today, tomorrow, you're thinking farther out. What do I need to be doing next month? What do I need to be doing three months? What do I need to be doing six months? Right. And that's out from there. We already talked about the recessed eyes here. We don't have a lot of upper eyelid. We talked about that. Yeah. Those are the main things about your face. Wild. <laughs> Absolutely wild. Do ear lobes tell you anything? I feel like we talked about ear lobes. In the they plant do. I'll be honest with you. I don't spend much time on it, not because it's not there, but because if you go to most people's pictures, like, uh, let me grab a different picture of you guys real fast. Um, uh, let me reshare. All right. So here's a recent picture of you two, right? What kind of ears does she have? Can't uh, see them. And oh, gotcha. because, yeah, because of more than 70% of the time ears are hidden, I have not put the time and effort to study ears. Mm -hmm. right? But so things we talked about, like she has, and we'll just kind of, sorry, hope she doesn't get mad. We'll dissect her. No, she's going to love it. She's, she <laughs> yeah. loves this stuff. So I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's all about it. <laughs> so she has the fuller upper lip more than you do. So yours is very flat here when you see, right? Hers a little more full. She, so she's still not the first one to talk about herself, but she will before you will, because that's a little bit fuller. So look at that, the angled eyebrow right here, right? Angle. And then it comes right down like that. So she's got the angled eyebrow. So she wants to be in charge. She wants to be involved with the process, right? In her personal life. I can't see the other side, but this is personal side, right? Um, so she's more of the optimist. So we we're talking about like when you draw eye, see how her eyes angle up just a little bit on both sides. So she likes to hear more of the positive than she does anything else when you're talking to her, mm -hmm. right? Now, she's not gonna like what I'm about to say here in a minute, but you'll verify. So see this little bump in your nose right here? Mm -hmm. That is where you are the nicest person known to man until somebody backs you into a corner and then you're hell to deal with, right? Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, when she comes out, uh, you better run and hide. Oh, we both have it too, don't we? Uh, yep. We both have that. Yep. It's right here on you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then um, what was the last thing I was going to talk about? There, there. Yeah. And she's got a rounded chin just like you do, right? So you're always willing to stand up for each other. And that's where the rounded part comes in. Now she gets a lot of attention. Um, you can't see this, but I've seen other pictures, but she has, see how her cheeks are high and wide. Mm -hmm. So light reflects off that. So when she goes into a room, she'll get attention because light will reflect off of this part of her face. And so when she walks in the room, she gets attention. Now with attention comes disdain from other people who don't get that attention. So I think you and I talked about on the plane of she needs to learn to give compliments, sincere compliments to other people who start giving her the cold shoulder for no reason whatsoever. 
Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Cause people don't even know, they don't understand why they would not like somebody. And I'm sure we all have those kind of uh, predispositions in some way, shape or form. Right. Yeah. It's a jealousy thing. So the reason they call it, like, if you have really high and wide cheeks and they're rounded, they're called movie star cheeks. And the reason they're named that is not all the way back to Aristotle, but it's an easy way to say, go look at when the movies first came out, they didn't have a lot of makeup and everything else. So they really, the actors were the ones whose light reflected off their cheeks best. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're called movie star cheeks. Got it. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. and then we talked about, here's, here's a better one. So look how far out and rounded your cheeks are. So like mm-hmm. we were talking about that earlier, like you have the, the wide cheeks also. So you can keep going, going and see, look, high ears, low eyebrows. And this one, we can actually make out your eyebrows. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They're very flat. Yep. So I'll see if there's uh, anything else here. Oh, okay. So I'll give, we'll go pick on you one last time because these are important. Uh, So let me do another screen catch. All right. Because this one, people will be interested in. All right. So you see the new picture? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have what is called. Oh, yeah. Serial killer. Yeah. The (laughs) Einstein line right here. Let me make that a little bit thicker. (laughs) So this is deep, intense study. When you see them across the forehead like that. Then you also have forced focus lines right here and right here, which is once you're in the middle of focusing on something, like you don't want people often just have to walk up and smack you in the back of the head to get you to pay attention after that, right? Like when you're in the middle of something, you're in the middle of it. Mm. And it looks like you almost have a third one coming in, which if you do, that's perfectionist-like tendencies. So it's hard to tell. I can make out two of them for sure, but I can't really tell on the third. I would definitely say I'm, yeah, I, I see it. I see what you're talking about for sure. Yeah. So and like we talked about, look at the widest part of your cheeks or all the way out here. Yeah. So. And so you, you draw that like gas gauge thing for me. Oh, yeah. so sure. The, like the, it, so that's the, the triangle, right? Like the triangle, what do they call that? Um, uh, Rembrandt, the Rembrandt triangle, right? I don't know what that is. So in, um, you, you mentioned movie stars, which is interesting. Yeah. And uh, when you are lighting somebody in uh for like a cinematic movie if we Mm -hmm. pull up the avengers you'll notice that there's so yes you have the cheek the cheek light that's like bouncing off the top of the the cheeks so like you'll notice this perfect triangle right here and that is actually it's called a rembrandt which was a ode to a painting way way back and in like a long time ago and that relates to cinematography when you're lighting somebody and the reason they do that is mm-hmm. because of the angle of the sun. So when you're outside, it looks most natural to have sun come down over here, right? right. And then there's a shadow, but then there's light that goes on the, on the ridge of your nose, goes past it. Uh-huh. And, um, so that way, that's why like when you have the, the, the uh, campfire stories, they put a flashlight yeah. under your, uh, under your, your shade. Yeah. It doesn't show any light above here. And then it goes straight to the ridge of your eyebrows, which is a unflattering angle, which is also scary. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, see? There you go. Yeah. But we should uh, really quickly just to like show you that. Cause I think that'd be an interesting part of honestly, like when you're talking about movie stars and stuff, yeah. I might show that. Um, so Rembrandt, um, let's see. Avengers Rembrandt movie poster okay i'm trying to find a good example here let's see these are all horrible um bad examples rembrandt lighting perfect there we go okay so let's see, let me share my screen here. So look at, look at this. So you're talking about like the, uh, this is, you have like, you can go for, go oh, for yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. that's Rembrandt. So um, that's what they're looking for. It's this little triangle of light. Gotcha. Interesting. So, yeah. Fascinating. Right. So that's why um, even if someone doesn't necessarily have that feature, there's mm-hmm. lighting techniques that you can use to then create that feature for them, which I, th- I thought was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. 
That is cool. See, I like learning new stuff like this. That's the best part about it. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. It's I get to share and learn at the same time. That's right. So Dude, we went way over our time. So thank yeah. you so much for I, I love doing this. So thanks for having me on. Yeah. Like, so hey, we'll make it happen again. We'll pick a different Absolutely. feature to talk about. Absolutely. Well, guys, uh, make sure you check out Brian. Where can they find you on uh, Instagram? What's your IG? Subtle Skills, S U B T L E S K I L L S, or just subtleskills.com. And then uh, the QR code if they go and watch it on YouTube. Yep. There's a QR code um, about five minutes ago, I think, that he displayed on the screen, guys. So if you want to scrub through the video, if you've already listened to it, you can find it there. Um, this has been so much fun. Wow. Yeah. Like, I feel like I learned more today than I would have learned by reading five books on body language or psychology or anything like that. So thank you so much, Brian. Really course, appreciate hey, it. What we'll do is one of the times I'm in Nebraska, we'll just go hang out somewhere and we'll grab one waiter or waitress, right? And do it to them and watch them bring everybody else around. And then you'll get to see it in action. Make sure my, make sure Megan is there for that because she, she loves this stuff like 10 times more than even I do. And I'm, I'm obviously very fascinated by it. Um, yeah. But she completely like last night, literally she was sitting in bed reading a book on, um, on body language. And then also primary secondary emotions so like the mm -hmm. primary emotion being something that happened to you the secondary emotion being something that is a result of the thing that happened to you she's literally yes. reading that last night so to give you an example of how much she loves it <laughs> oh yeah she'll love this then uh, she will absolutely love this and yeah uh have her read janine driver's book uh, you say more than you think yeah Yep. She already has what everybody is, uh, what everybody is saying. So that's, uh, that's, that was funny to see that one on there, but I'm going to let you go, brother. Thank you so much again, Brian. Have a great day. Appreciate you, buddy. See ya. All right. Bye.